Hello, Our World, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Our World Talk. Uh, we have with us this morning, Courtney Kahn, General Counsel for Broward Palm Beaches and St. Lucie Realtors, as well as my favorite president, <laughs> David Searle from Broward Palm Beaches and St. Lucie you Realtors. You say that's all the presidents. <laughs> you, you, Usually, just, you, you don't want to do it. Favorite 2024 president. Yeah, well, you didn't want to do it a second year, so that's why I'm your favorite president. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's, uh, we're going to try and make this as light and, uh, as, as lighthearted and fun, but we are talking about some serious stuff today. Uh, obviously, uh, it's all over, um, the social media waves and the news, uh, that we did have a proposed settlement in, uh, the, uh, the lawsuits that, uh, NAR has been, uh, battling as well as, uh, a number of large brokerages. Uh, we did do the Sitzer Burnett trial. Uh, verdict podcast when that decision came out at the end of October. Uh, but this one is going to focus on the NAR proposed settlement to get you guys up to speed on what the new landscape of real estate uh, is going to look like uh, as we go through this year and beyond. So uh, to give you guys a little bit of background, on March 15th, 2024, NAR announced a proposed settlement that would end litigation of claims brought by home sellers related to broker commissions. The agreement would resolve claims against NAR, its members, all state and local realtor associations, all association-owned MLSs, and all brokerages as uh, all brokerages with an NAR member as principal that had a residential transaction volume in 2022 of two billion dollars or below. The settlement is comprised of three major points. The first is that NAR would pay $418 million over the course of about four years. Second is that offers of compensation would be prohibited on the MLS. And third, MLS participants working with buyers would be required to enter into written representation agreements with their buyers. The settlement is still subject to court approval, and it's estimated that the changes will go into effect mid-July. Courtney, did I get that right? Yes, so far so good. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, you wrote this script for me, so I know that I got that right. Um, okay, so uh, David, we're going to start with you. Uh, big question that we are getting now is, can members still collect compensation as a buyer agent, and what does that look like? Yes, 100%. You know, and, and thank you for doing this, because you know there are a lot of myths and misconceptions, misinformation out there, and I think... Uh, you know, the members really need to hear the facts exactly how they are supposed to be heard, right? Absolutely. Um, so yes, yeah. the, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, you can definitely uh, receive compensation. It just looks a little bit different. Uh, sellers may offer concessions that uh, buyer brokerage um, service fees uh, may be included in that. Uh, they also may be, um, buyers will be paying uh, the buyer's agents uh, compensation. So, you know, it really is just important to uh, make sure you're transparent, uh, make sure you're sitting down with your buyers and, and they understand how um, the, how you're going to be compensated. And going forward, you're going to continue negotiation with that compensation. And can those buyer agents still collect a portion of the listing agent's commission if that's what the seller chooses to offer? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question is for Courtney. Uh, Courtney, if there will be no offer of compensation in the MLS when the field is removed, which we know is going to happen, uh, but sellers are allowed to compensate buyer agents, how and where will it be displayed or made known to buyers that the seller is willing to help compensate the buyer's agent? Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me back on the podcast, first of all. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> I'm happy to set the record straight, please. Yes, I will. Um, I'm glad you asked that question. So a lot of these questions are questions that we're getting from a ton of our members. So I'm happy that we're addressing them here today. This one in particular, we've been getting a lot. And David alluded to some of these previously already, but there are several options for this. The first I want to point out is that Listing brokers are allowed to display an offer of compensation for their listings directly on their brokerage website. Okay. So that will be an option for them. Um, they, you also have the option of your buyer's broker can, of course, contact the listing broker directly for that info via email, phone call, text, etc. So that is still available for them. There's also the option that David mentioned which is the buyer concessions will be allowed on the MLS. And an example of that, again, is that you can use those for buyer closing costs. 
One other item I do want to mention as well is that the proposed NAR settlement does not prohibit buyers from including buyer agent compensation in the offer that they submit to the seller or the seller's agent. So that is available as well. So basically in special terms of uh, a contract for purchase, as a buyer's agent, if your buyer wishes to ask the seller to compensate your buyer's agent, they can just write that into the offer. These are the terms that I'm offering. This is the purchase price. This is the closing date. And I would also like to have X amount of dollars or X percentage to be paid towards my buyer's broker. Yes. And there are some pros and cons to how you go about doing that, whether it's going to be right in the purchase and sale agreement or whether it's going to be in a separate agreement, maybe between broker to broker. I do know that Florida Realtor stated they're going to be updating their forms. We're going to be updating our forms as well. So exactly how that'll look is still a little bit to be determined. But yes, the NIR settlement does not prohibit that. Okay, beautiful. Uh, Next question is for David. David, can members still publish cooperative commission offers in the broker remarks field? Because this is a question that we are getting asked so many times. Well, we can't have it in the MLS, but what if we just put it in the broker remarks? Well, the reason why Courtney's here is because of me. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, no, no, you can't. And, and we, you know, we have to understand this, right? Whether we agree with it or not agree, it doesn't matter, right? This is this is what we're faced with. And so we need to make sure that we get the whole idea of displaying offer of compensation out of the MLS, out of our heads. We need to make sure that we can continue to be transparent and continue to negotiate our commissions through both whether it's seller or buyer. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's time to adapt, guys. You just heard it here. The changes are coming, um, and you're not going to be able to get around them. You're just going to have to follow the new rules. And going off that <laughs> note as well, because I know we get a lot of the questions of whether it can be in broker remarks, yep. that also means that you cannot upload documents asking right. for an offer of compensation as well. So like David said, Get that out of your mind, not in broker remarks, not uploaded in documents, it cannot be in the MLS. Don't try to get crafty with MLS descriptions yes. that allude to things. It's not uh, the time to be cute. No, okay. this is definitely not the time to be cute because we're don't, talking about l- legalities and, and possibly getting sued. And don't get your information off of Facebook groups, uh, <laughs> please. You know, uh, please, they're giving advice that is just incorrect and inaccurate. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It um, The Facebook groups are so cringe right now because I just, I read something and I'm like, I can't believe that these people actually think that this is the way that they're going to be able to like get around the, the new system. And uh, they're, I mean, the, the legal troubles that I see coming from uh, some of these misinformed, uh, completely, you know, unguided people yeah. is, is just mind boggling. You, you got to give people credit though. Realtors are certainly, <laughs> we're crafty. We are definitely crafty. Like, we're like, we're going to find a way, but no, yeah. in this case, don't find that way. Just, you know, um, continue to negotiate with your buyers and sellers as you should yeah. and continue to be transparent with them and everything is good. It's as simple as picking up the phone and calling the other agent and saying, Hey, is your seller offering any sort of compensation? If they're not, then negotiate it and figure it out. Wait, you have to talk to the other agent? That's crazy. <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, yeah, real estate these days, it's, uh, it boggles my mind sometimes when uh, people don't answer their phone, their voicemail's full. I mean, yeah, let's uh, let's start picking up the phones, people, and working together. Um, okay, Courtney, how would the prohibition of offers of compensation on the MLS affect pending transactions and current deals? Yeah, so another question we get all the time, so I'm happy we're addressing this. Um, As you stated, it's anticipated that the changes will go into effect sometime around mid-July of this year. And until those practice changes go into effect, it's important to know that offers of compensation are still permitted on the MLS. So until those changes are effective, they're still allowed for now. And again, even after the changes are effective, the offers of compensation can still be made They just have to be off the MLS. They can still be made, just not on the MLS. So once those changes do actually go into effect though, you may have to modify or amend your existing agreements to ensure they comply with the new practice changes. Now I say may have to, because it does depend on what agreement you're using and what that agreement says in it. And I'll give you an example of that is, 
For example, if your agreements say in them that part of your contractual obligations are that you're going to make an offer of compensation in the MLS, obviously you will have to modify your agreement to make sure that that's not in there. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, I know that uh, there's in our listing agreements, there is something that says if there's no offer of compensation, property can't be placed in MLS. That is obviously going to be wiped out. Florida Realtors is updating that form and removing that language. Uh, But for right now, uh, for anybody who's signing a listing agreement, it might be a great idea to strike that line in the current form that we have yes. uh, to make sure that you're not having somebody agree to something like that, obviously, with what's going on. Right now, as of the tentative date that they've uh, Florida Realtors has given us for those uh, document changes would be May 31st. Okay, beautiful. Uh, so t- next question to David, does the settlement change access to mortgages for buyers? And this is a big mm-hmm. sort of cloud and question that everybody has. And it's even hard to find out from the lenders on what's happening because this, it, these are federal changes. It is. And it's, it, you know, it's continuing, you know, to understand interpretations of things and, um, you know, trying to work with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, you know, um, FHA, you know, so yeah. So under the settlement, buyers still have the same options uh, when it comes to compensating the real estate representatives and based on uh, NAR's interpretation of their current guidance, buyers should still be able to get financing from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the FHA under these scenarios. Okay. Um, However, NAR is uh, working uh, to verify that this interpretation will hold. Uh, Moreover, um, however, as of now, April 2024, none of these agencies will allow the buyer to finance a commission with the mortgage at this time. Uh, NER did also uh, recently issue uh, letters to both um, the Department of Veterans Affairs and GSEs and regulators urging them to make changes to accommodate buyers who may not have the means to come out of pocket to compensate their professional representative directly. And I think, you know, this is a big thing. And and we've all talked about this, like, how are we going to be able to, um, you know, work with them? And, and, and we're doing everything uh, behind the scenes, obviously, uh, trying to get uh, more interpretations um, and understand financing and um, going forward. But I would say this, is that, you know, buyers will still have the same, you know, options, um, you know, whether it's concessions or, or whatnot, and we'll continue to uh, um, move forward and, um, you know, as we should. Okay. And um, one of the other things, and I don't know if I'm, I'm going to give a plug, but um, our next town hall, you know, we have a, a town hall. Um, our next town hall is actually going to deal with lending and financing. Okay. Um, the date hasn't been issued yet, uh, but it will be, uh, you know, sent out to our, our, our world members. Okay. Make sure that you guys uh, stay tuned and uh, catch up on that town hall so that we can find out what's happening in the world of financing. My shameless plug. Yep. Hey, I love it. We, I mean, this is this is why we're here doing this podcast is to get yeah. the information out to our members um, and, you know, realtors uh, across the country, anybody who's listening to find out exactly what's going on, um, get that info to them. So tune into that town hall, make sure that uh, uh, you check ourworld.com to find out uh, when the next one's going to be or check your email. Uh, next question is to Courtney. What other requirements does the NAR uh, settlement impose on those uh, who it's applicable to? Yeah. So I know we mentioned a couple of the main points already that you talked about at the beginning, but I do want to dive a little bit deeper into some of those other terms in the settlement. The settlement itself is over 100 pages, so it's very lengthy, but I do want to take this opportunity to get into a little more of the specifics of some of these requirements. So I'm about Thank to hit you. you with a good amount of information right now. Well, you know what? I, I don't think that there's a realtor out there who wants to read a 100-page settlement yes. that's written in legalese. So, so on page 72, section A, part <laughs> three, we... Uh... Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go through, there's pretty much seven other major points that I want to bring up. So I'm going to okay. go through those. Although I will say that most of these requirements, I think most people already are aware of, should be doing or not be doing already. So I don't think any of these are, you know, truly groundbreaking. Major, yeah, okay. Requirements. No, no game changers. Okay. Yes. Um, but so with that said, the first one is that if you are receiving compensation from any source, your agreement must specify the amount or rate of compensation to be received, how the amount will be determined. I think that one's pretty straightforward. Everyone should be doing that already. The second is that the amount of compensation must be objectively ascertainable and may not be open-ended. This is important because examples of this are, as everyone starts using those 
buyer written agreements if they're not already. You cannot say things like buyer broker compensation shall be whatever amount the seller is offering to the buyer. That's open-ended and that is prohibited. Okay. So make sure you're not doing that. Let me stop you right there. We're going to go back to point number or the point number one. Mm-hmm. So the agreement must specify the amount or rate of compensation to be received and how the amount will be determined. So is is that in the buyer broker agreement that you're using, or is that the listing agreement, or both? Both. both. Beautiful. I, I I know that people are driving to work right now, and they're going, wait a minute, I want. How does that need to be uh, handled? Okay. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Good question. Um, So the third is that you cannot receive compensation for brokerage services from any source that exceeds the amount agreed to in the buyer agreement. This is really important because you don't want to have a situation where you sign an agreement with a buyer for a certain amount and then a seller is offering more than that amount. You cannot take that amount if it's more than what you agreed to in your agreement with your buyer. So that is important to keep in mind. Contracts are negotiable. They can be modified, amended, et cetera. So how you want to handle that is up to you, but it's important to note that you cannot receive more than what you agree to in your buyer agreement. Okay, so let's go on to number four. Yes, so number four is, and no one should be doing this already, but you cannot say your services are free unless you are actually receiving no compensation from any source. That one is pretty straightforward, but... Definitely do not do that. Um, number five. And that's is, in effect right now. Yes. That was, uh, mean, this no is not the part of the settlement. That, yeah. That. Yes. You should never be doing that. But definitely don't do it going forward. Um, number five is that those acting for sellers must disclose and obtain seller approval for any payment or offer of payment that the listing broker or seller will make to someone on the other side acting for a buyer. And that disclosure must be in writing prior to any payment or agreement to pay the other side and specify that amount of payment. I know that was kind of a mouthful, but basically what that is saying is that you cannot decide unilaterally on your own to offer the buyer's broker compensation without seller approval. So if you're representing a seller, you can't just decide yourself. You're gonna offer an amount to the other side without talking to your seller and getting approval from them and having that in writing. That's what it's saying. So two left. Number six is that you must disclose to prospective sellers and buyers that broker commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable in your listing or buyer agreement and in any pre-closing disclosure documents, if applicable. Now, I will say, if you can only remember a couple things from this podcast, I think that (laughs) one of the takeaways would be this phrase and to really burn that into your brain get comfortable saying it with your clients and customers, putting it in your agreements, using it. It's a really important phrase that we're seeing come up throughout all this litigation. So I'm going to say that again. It's that commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable. So, you know, live it, breathe it, love it. (laughs) Put that saying on your mirror, you know, Um, remember that saying is they say if you say it three times, that it's going to stick in your head. So, guys, commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable. Good. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have that you cannot filter out or restrict MLS listings to your customer or client based on the level of compensation being offered to the buyer broker. Again, no one should be doing this. It's a big no-no. Do not pass go. You know, we are not steering. that. Yes. Okay. And that's something that uh, we don't even have the ability to do in our current MLS system. You cannot filter uh, blind commissions. Yes. You you can't do it in our MLS, but also make sure you're not manually doing that yourself. You should never be cherry picking those. Yeah. Okay. No cherry picking. I like that one. (laughs) Um, Okay. Moving on to uh, David. What should our members be doing now to um, prepare for the anticipated changes that are coming? Hopefully they, they've started before this, but um, if they haven't, um, when they're preparing now, you really need a buyer presentation. You need to be able to articulate your value just like, as if you were articulating your value to your seller. Right. And, and remember that like not all are, you know, your business model is your business model. Your buyer brokerage agreement, whatever that is, needs to be included into your buyer marketing plan or whatever the presentation may be. Um, and remember that it's integrity, this professionalism, let's embrace this. Let's make sure that we protect our uh, consumer and we continue to go out there and think about the consumer rather than thinking about ourselves and continue to move forward. 
And I, I'll add that you should be regularly checking your emails, stay on top of exactly what is happening sure. um, in the world of um, uh, real estate in, in our industry. Uh, make sure that you're uh, checking our emails from our world because we're going to give you constant updates. We've got our world pulse that um, comes out. That's got great info. Courtney's got legal lane. Tune into these podcasts and make sure that you're staying up to date on everything that's happening. And as an R World member, we have a uh, subscription to Riz Media. Mm-hmm. So you can log into Riz Media the same way that you log into um, your uh, Dash and use your same login info in order to read those articles. And they give great information and great updates on everything they've had. You know, realtors have been clamoring for being professional, right? Um, the, you know, we want to be considered um, a career, professionalism, right? Um, this is our opportunity to really showcase to the customer and the consumer that this is who we are. Right. We're going to be professional. We're going to continue to work with our consumers going forward. Love it. Uh, moving on to Courtney. What settlement resources do we have for our members to help them navigate these changes? Yeah, so we have tons of resources for you guys. And there's a lot out there. Um, you know, we're really committed to making sure that everybody has information and resources available. So there's several things that we have done for all of our members. Um, so we've sent out multiple emails already on the topic. Uh, this includes our new email series, which is called Navigating the Settlements. And what that is, is it's a weekly email series with updated clarifications and resources. So make sure you're checking your inbox for those. We also did create a website uh, for our members, which is at ourworld.com slash settlement. And that includes copies of all the communications we've sent out. It has a link to the actual 100 plus page settlement agreement (laughs) if you're dying to read it. (laughs) actually um and also on there we have of course links to nar's resources as well they do have a really good faq page that we've linked to our site also we also did two town halls on the settlement terms as well where david myself and charlie lee uh, who's senior counsel from nar attended and we went through all of the proposed terms Now, don't worry if you missed that because we did create a recap of all the questions that were asked and answered during those town halls. And that's actually available as well on our settlement website. So definitely check that out. As Chris mentioned, we do have access to Riz Media for our members. That's a great resource as well because they've been providing lots of coverage on the lawsuits and all the surrounding issues. And last but not least, I do want to mention that We did kind of see the writing on the wall a little bit with requiring the buyer written agreements. So we have been offering classes on how to use buyer agreements um, for quite some time now. And our most popular course, I will say, is called Understanding Buyer Broker Agreements. We are offering that pretty much on a weekly basis right now, both in person and online. And you can sign up for that on your campus dashboard. So definitely check out all of those resources. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it right here. We've got all of the resources that you could possibly want uh, and and everything that you didn't know that you need. So make sure you get your head wrapped around uh, using those buyer broker agreements. Uh, Talk to your broker uh, about uh, how to put together a buyer broker presentation and truly articulate your value to the customer that you're going to be working with um, because you are going to have to develop some skills and learn how to negotiate with your buyers, learn how to negotiate with your sellers um, and make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page, knows exactly what you are getting paid when you're working with that buyer, how you're going to get paid. Uh, Make sure that everything is documented in writing uh, moving forward. So that way you can keep yourself out of as much trouble as possible. Uh, Courtney, do you have anything uh, that you want to, um, to add to close us out? No, I mean, I guess I'll just say I think my final words would be, you know, not to panic or stress out too much about all the changes going on. They're definitely doable and manageable. Just make sure you're staying up to date and you're keeping apprised of all the new information. But definitely no, you know, need to panic. Yeah, definitely no need to panic. David, are you in a panic? No, I'm definitely not. You know, and and the interesting thing is that, you know, our real estate members are so amazing, right? I mean, you know, going out and seeing them in in action, I mean, they're the best of the best and continue to do business, continue to think about the consumer and continue to negotiate your commissions is, is what we do. 
and uh, continue to be professional. And um, it's time to up to our game. You know, it's uh, you know we need to have buyer presentations uh, to articulate our value and and uh, and going forward. So appreciate uh, podcasts like this. We're 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 professional negotiators yeah. by trade, and people freak out mm-hmm. because we. I have this like view in our head of, oh my gosh, how am I going to negotiate my commission with somebody? Well, my gosh, you, you negotiate so many different points of a contract on somebody else's behalf. Go out there and start negotiating for your own benefit and your on on your own behalf. Yeah. We we can do it. That's what we do. Yeah, you just pick up the phone and ask them, "Are you offering a compensation? How hard is that?" Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not very it's not very hard. And then have a talk, have a talk with your buyer. Hey, you know what? This is what's going on. Right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being with us. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we tried to keep this as as lighthearted and fun as possible because we know that uh, most people are listening to this uh, in the morning with your coffee in hand driving to work. So. Um, we, uh, we thank you for being here. We thank you for staying up to date on uh, all things uh, legal and exactly what is happening. Uh, like Courtney said, to make sure that uh, you're looking at ourworld.com forward slash settlement uh, to find all the latest and greatest news. And uh, we'll keep this going and provide you with everything that we possibly can. But uh, thank you guys for listening. And we'll see you right back here next time on Our World Talk. Mm-hmm.